Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Vivek Agarwala and I am a consultant medical oncologist and hemato oncologist working at Narayana Super Speciality Hospital Howrah and RN Tagore Hospital Kolkata. So we all know March is uh, uh, colorectal cancer awareness month and uh, this is why I am here to talk to you about colorectal cancer. So colorectal cancer is uh, uh, one of the most common cancers, in fact, the fourth uh, most common cancer uh, worldwide. And uh, this uh, cancer uh, begins uh, usually uh, in the colon, that is the large intestine or the rectum, uh, which is the last few inches uh, of the uh, large intestine uh, just before it ends in the anal opening. So this cancer, as we all uh, understand, uh, begins uh, uh, as a small, benign, non-cancerous clump of uh, certain dysplastic cells uh, on the inner wall of colon or rectum, which is called the polyp. And then it usually uh, progresses uh, from dysplastic cells to, uh, you know, uh, cancerous polyp to carcinoma in situ to a frank cancer following the adenoma carcinoma sequence. So it is very important to know this because if we can detect these polyps early and treat it or remove it, then we can prevent them from becoming colon cancer or rectal cancers over time. And that is why there is an importance of colorectal screening that is uh, should be done after every 50 years with a, a stool occult blood test and a colonoscopy every 10 years after 50 years of age so that you can detect these smaller lesions early and hence you can decrease the mortality due to colorectal cancers by treating these cases as early as possible. Now coming to certain uh, epidemiological facts on colorectal cancer regarding India. So in India we have around 1 lakh cases of colorectal cancer being diagnosed every year. And usually uh, colorectal cancer does not present uh, in the early stages uh, because smaller cancerous lesions do not cause any symptoms and therefore they are diagnosed in later stages, mainly in stage 3. It usually occurs in individuals older than 50 but it can uh, develop in anyone and the common treatment approaches include surgery, chemotherapy and radiation therapy. So to talk about what are the causes and risk factors for colorectal cancer. So although uh, we are seeing uh, the colorectal cancer is usually among, among patients who are more than 50 years of age, it can occur in younger patients, especially it is a rectal cancer. And usually the prognosis is not good among the younger patients. Uh, it, it, it is there uh, in, in patients who have intestinal polyps or colorectal cancer, who have family history of colorectal cancer, or who have inflammatory conditions of the colon, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Also, uh, uh, a diet which is uh, very low on fiber and high on fat and, cal and calories is something that is shown to be preponderance, causing preponderance for colorectal cancer. So the, the, the risk factors also include obesity and sedentary lifestyles, uh, smoking, alcohol consumption, diabetes, and history of uh, radiation uh, to the colon and all which can later lead to colorectal cancer. Now, uh, to talk about uh, the common signs and uh, symptoms of colorectal cancer, so usually it presents as a change in, in the bowel habit uh, you know, alternating diarrhea or constipation. Sometimes uh, when, when it, it may cause a mild intestinal obstruction because of this ulceration and proliferation and inflammation where the food particles are not able to pass through that segment of colon leading to abdominal pain, bloating, gas, cramps. And often these lesions may bleed, which may lead to blood in stool or bleeding from the rectum. Apart from this, systemic symptoms like tiredness, weakness, unexplained weight loss, uh, fatigue, uh, all these can also happen uh, as symptoms. It is important to identify these symptoms early, especially if you have a preponderance so that you can go for a quick colonoscopy uh, and, and, and diagnose if there is any polyp or a cancerous lesion there. Now, to uh, talk about uh, the different uh, uh, treatment uh, options of uh, colorectal cancer. 
so uh, uh, surgery is the mainstay of treatment for colorectal cancer and uh, it ideally uh, involves a removal of the cancerous part of the colon including margin for healthy part of the colon as well as lymph node dissection so as uh, if there is any cancer which is spread to the lymph nodes is also removed also uh, patients uh, uh, who are uh, having diseases in the other parts of the abdomen sometimes by spread of the disease is also removed by surgery and surgery is the most curative option for colorectal cancer now uh, especially in the lower part of the colon in the rectal cancer sometimes the disease is is uh, has a more local spread and requires radiotherapy uh, to downstage the disease before it can go for surgery so uh, radiotherapy is often used uh, in in uh, rectal cancers uh, especially as a new adjuvant treatment uh, before surgery to downstage the disease so that surgery can be done also uh, later on radiation can be used in in advanced diseases for decreasing the pain and symptoms chemotherapy is is one of the essential components of treating colorectal cancer once it is stage 2 or more uh, it is used to uh, kill the cancer cells which might have had micrometastasis or have spread outside the 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 colon Uh, or any residual disease that might be left behind which might be killed by the chemotherapy so that the disease doesn't recurs this type of chemotherapy is called an adjuvant chemotherapy which is given after surgery has been done which is you always used in stage 3 cancers and sometimes used in high risk stage 2 cancers also apart from this when the disease spreads Uh, to other organs when it is called a stage 4 disease then invariably systemic therapy is the way to treat colorectal cancer whereby chemotherapy is given to control the disease to downstage the disease to uh, decrease the symptoms to improve the quality of life as well as to increase the overall survival now apart from traditional chemotherapy like folfox or folfiri or kpox or uh, irinotecan or capecitabine based treatments certain targeted drugs are also in vogue and used very well to treat colorectal cancer these targeted therapies include anti egfr molecules like cetuximab or panitumumab as well as uh, vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitors like bevacizumab also nowadays other targeted treatments like braf inhibitors Uh, are also being used to treat colorectal cancer which are braf mutant as well as immunotherapy is also used to treat colorectal cancer especially if the msi is high or there is high tumor mutation burden or pdl1 expression so uh, covid uh, is, uh, is is something that has affected us as uh, you know as a community uh, uh, since last 2 uh, years and uh, covid uh, related uh, uh, you know discussion is something that has to be done so covid how it has affected colorectal cancer are definitely because uh, patients have not been able to have timely surgery a patient that have been able to have timely diagnosis and hence in the covid era the the colorectal cancer has become a better uh, you know a more problem problematic because uh, this and of course treatment related complications have increased because if they are having covid then treatment uh, is sometimes deferred and if they are, have taken chemotherapy already and have covid then they might be having uh, more complications and and regarding the vaccine so again uh, cancer patients can be vaccinated against the covid 19 and it is important to talk to your doctor before you go ahead with the vaccine and if you are taking treatment for colorectal cancer uh, there is ab- no absolute contraindication where you cannot ta- take the covid vaccine and if you are on chemotherapy ideally if you can schedule your uh, covid vaccine between the two Uh, doses of chemotherapy then it is the best uh, uh, for uh, uh, efficacy of the vaccine so with this i thank you all for uh, your attention and uh, once again this is dr vivek agarwala uh, speaking you about colorectal cancer for colorectal cancer awareness month thank you